What is going on, guys? It is Wednesday, January the 20th. Happy Inauguration Day, of course. And this is my news radar. So let's start this episode off with a couple of Surface Duo-related stories. I've been being asked pretty regularly if I knew anything about when the next Surface Duo update would be coming. And unfortunately, we really didn't have a whole lot to go on. Obviously, when the Duo launched, Microsoft promised monthly updates. And to their credit, I think they got two of them. So there was September, which happened before launch. October and then November, and then we missed December. Uh, there was apparently some big bug they couldn't get fixed. It got pushed back because of the holidays after that. Here we are, January the 20th, no update yet. Well, we are getting word now in this instance from one Zach Bowden from Windows Central. January update for Surface Duo is expected to start rolling out sometime next week. I'm told more bug fixes, no new features, also not Android 11. So not particularly exciting, but hopefully some of these bug fixes, you know, who knows, maybe maybe they can address some of the problems that was in my uh, fix the Surface Duo video from a couple of weeks back. Uh, no Android 11 is maybe a little bit frustrating, um, although I'm not really shocked by that revelation, if I'm being honest, I kind of feel like Android 11 is still uh, hopefully a Q1 2021 thing, but I wouldn't be absolutely shocked if it was even later than that. What they're doing with the Duo software-wise is pretty advanced stuff. It's pretty complicated stuff, and it's pretty different stuff having two screens. Um, it is just, it's just different, and they're trying to bake it in at a really deep OS level, so... Updates are not necessarily easy uh, to, to make for this thing. But at any rate, hopefully early next week we'll have a January update that will hopefully fix a lot of the issues that you guys have been experiencing as well as issues that I've been experiencing. Speaking of issues that other people have been experiencing, let's talk about one particular thing that I, I saw on the Surface Duo subreddit a couple of weeks back, or not even a couple of weeks back, that's not true. It was like a couple of days back. And I, I read through the thread and I didn't comment and I didn't um, spread it anywhere because I just wasn't really sure what to make of this. But it has now appeared on Windows Central, so I guess it's, you know, it's out there. So let's talk about it. So a user on Reddit reported that their Surface Duo uh, basically electrocuted them. So my understanding of the story is that this individual, um, I think this is their third Surface Duo that they've had to return. I think one of them had like a flickering screen maybe, and the other one was like bulging, batteries bulging or something like that. This was their third one, and their claim is that they were they were plugging it in. They had it plugged in, and they were holding it. I'll show you how I, how I envisioned this. Maybe they're holding it like this, and you can see where the charging port is, that that was pressed against their hand, and something went horribly wrong there, and electrocuted them. So the context that they posted here was this image. All right, you can see the redness there on the hand, Surface Duo alleged burn, and then the Duo itself, it's very blurry. It's really hard to tell what's going on there, but they said that the charging port actually melted a little bit, and it does appear to dip in a bit, although it is quite blurry, kind of hard to, to see. They said later on, can't tell if it's a burn or just red from the zap. It feels like a burn. If you've ever touched a hot frying pan with part of your hand, exactly how it feels now. The moment it happened, happened uh, was exactly like a damn cattle prod. Surprising how strong it was, but I guess these chargers do put out a lot of juice. So Windows Central does say here, without seeing the device in person or other images or videos, it's difficult to determine the accuracy of this post. It would, of course, be quite worrying if accurate. Now, I don't know where I stand on this. I've never heard of, I've heard of static discharge. That that happens. That's very common. I've never heard of someone being electrocuted to the point of causing a burn like this, or they, they mentioned in another comment that isn't in this article that it, it literally, um, actually, that, no, I lied. There it is. It said, my hand gripped tighter when it shocked me. That takes quite a bit of voltage. I, I'm, I don't, I hesitate to call this person a liar. That is not what I'm doing. I'm not calling this person a liar. Live vicarious on, on Reddit. But I am dubious. I, 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 I guess I would love to know if any of you guys watching are electricians or have experience with voltage, amperage, wattage. What sort of power, what kind of current would actually cause the muscles to contract? 
Um, I guess that's my question coming from an 18 watt charger and apparently this was the factory charger as well. So again, not calling this person a liar. It could have happened. I, I don't know the mechanics of this. I'm not an electrical engineer. It's, it's a crazy thing if it's true. Now they've claimed that they've tested this outlet with other things to having no problems. I mean, you know, is there a possibility that something isn't grounded right in the outlet? Really hard to say exactly what's going on here. This is the first of something like this I have seen. Like, I don't know that I've ever seen a phone electrocute someone before. We've seen phones explode, unfortunately. This is pretty wild. I'd love to know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. So literally on the last news radar, I talked about the ROG Phone 4, and as soon as I made that video, a bunch more leaks came out. Apparently this is not even gonna be the ROG Phone 4. Apparently it's gonna be the ROG Phone 5. They're just skipping four. So to backtrack just a little bit, this is the gaming line, the gaming-centric phone from Asus, and the leak that is coming out about it is really weird, and I don't know how I feel about this at all. It's something called ROG Vision, and what it is is an extra screen on the back of the device. Now these things kind of have an interesting design to them and they've they've taken one of these little weird areas of, of geometric shapes and put in an extra screen for some unknown reason. So if we look here, you can see kind of there's, you know, some things going on on the screen and when he flips it over, he got what appears to be like a customization screen, he or she, I can't say for sure. When they flip it over, this appears to be like a customization screen to customize that rear display, which is pretty weird. Don't know how I feel about that, quite strange, but you can see that screen right in there. And then flipping it over, you can see that the, the forehead is still present and I imagine the chin is probably still there as well. It does remind me, they mention here, the second screen found on devices like the LG V10 or the full-blown interactive touch displays like on the Nubia smartphones. So some of the Nubia phones had a full-size screen on the back as well for some reason. I I'm having a hard time understanding like what that would be for. Like they're gonna have to really show me something. They're like, well, whatever, look at the back of my phone. Is it sitting face down? Like who, who puts their phone screen down on a table? That just seems like an insanely bad idea to me unless you like scratches on your phone. Not really sure what to make of this particular feature. But I figured since I just made a video about the ROG phone and then this came out like directly afterwards, I kind of needed to at least mention it. What do you guys think of a weird screen on the back of your gaming phone? And what would that be for? And last but not least, Windows 10X is already running on devices that it's not supposed to run on. These are devices that won't officially get Windows 10X. And in fact, we had heard early on that you weren't gonna be able to get your hands on Windows 10X unless you bought a device that officially supported it. Yet, here we are already running Windows 10X on all sorts of things like the Surface Pro 7. And we've got images here. Hola, 10X on Surface Pro. If we pull up these, uh, these images here, you'll get a pretty good idea. And that is clearly Windows 10X, same interface we saw in that little breakdown, same uh, Chrome OS centric, Chrome OS similar uh, interface that we've seen in the other videos. There's that notification area, quick settings area that is literally identical to to Chrome OS. And then of course, just cause why not, the Lumia 950XL, they've actually got Windows 10X running on there as well because why not? Sounds like a fun thing to do, seems pretty cool. And then last but not least, here's Windows 10X running through virtualization on a MacBook Air. I'm actually really intrigued by Windows 10X, the idea of it being quick booting, lightweight, better for battery life. You know, if there's a possibility of getting a hold of, a, of, a, of an ISO, for Windows 10X, I would definitely be interested in trying to install it on one of my devices. Would I necessarily want to completely replace Windows 10 with Windows 10X on something like my Surface Pro 7? I don't know, but I do have an extra Surface Pro 7 that's an i3, and it might be really interesting to see if a 4 gig RAM i3 model is more kick-ass on Windows 10X than it is on uh, standard Windows 10. It is important to point out here that they are doubling down that you won't be able to get Windows 10X to spice up your old PC, at least not officially. So I'm not advocating that you go out and pirate a copy of Windows 10X, but that will very likely be something that a lot of you will try to do. What do you guys think about the idea of doing just that, about using Windows 10X to take a lower end computer and, and maybe 
revitalize it. I've seen a lot of people actually uh, do the same thing with Chrome OS. There's an application that lets you install a Chrome OS build because it's all open source stuff on an x86 computer, laptop, whatever, and, and this thing, you know, a, a, a low-end older laptop would run Chrome OS absolutely fine. So maybe Windows 10X is the same way. I'd be really interested to see exactly that happening. So guys, that's all the news I have for you today. Be sure to check back every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the next news radar. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.